story of Jack and his comrades. I rather like this one. Um, I hope everyone is happy with talking English. Just, just go with it, it's the story. It was some time ago when a poor widow lived with her son. The son's name was Jack because, of course, People in stories are usually called Jack, unless they are German stories, in which case he's called Hans. So, there came a time when there was no food for the widow and Jack until the next potato harvest. And so Jack decided to go forth and seek his fortune. And so, his mother said, I will kill a hen for you, and I will bake a cake for you. Now which would you rather have? A whole cake, and a whole hen, and my curse, or half a hen, and half a cake, and my blessing? And of course, <laughs> because this is how stories always go, Jack says, I will take your blessing, mother, and half the hen, and half the cake. So Jack set forward and walked for a whole day. And on the second day, he found a donkey that was stuck. And perhaps he was stuck in mud. And so Jack helped the donkey freed him from the mud. And so the donkey thanked Jack and said that he too was seeking his fortune in pastures new. And so now Jack and the donkey set forth. And later that day they walked through a village where some boys had tied a kettle to the tail of a dog and were chasing the dog through the village. And so Jack and the donkey together rescued the dog and untied the kettle from around the dog's tail. So the dog agreed to join them. So the comrades are now Jack and the donkey and the dog. And so the three of them continued on their way. And on the next day, they were joined by a cat who said that she had decided to leave her home and seek out pastures new. So there's Jack and the donkey, and the dog, and a cat. And they all continued on their way. And the next day, they saw a fox. And the fox crossed their path, and in the fox's mouth was a cockerel. And so Jack, and the donkey, and the dog, and the cat chased the fox until he opened his mouth and let the cockerel fall down. So the cockerel agreed that he would join an ever-growing band of comrades. So there is now. Come on, you can join in with this. Who have we got now? We have Jack and... Come on, help me out here. We have Jack and the donkey and the dog and the cat and the cockerel. And so the companions carried on their way and they found themselves walking through a wood and Jack said, we must sleep here for the night. We must do as best as we can on the long grass. So they all settled down to sleep until they were woken by the cockerel. cock a doodle doing as of course cockerels do. And so Jack said, 
why are you crowing? The sun hasn't ridden, risen yet. But the cockerel said, I can see a light. I thought it was the sun. And when Jack looked round, he saw there was a funny tumble-down little cottage there in the woods. And coming through the window was candlelight. And Jack said, but it's just the light of a candle. But perhaps in the cottage, there are people who will help us and people who will give us food. So Jack went, looked through the window. And are you going to guess? I think you know, don't you? I think you know who the people were who were inside the cottage. Have a guess. Sitting around the table was a whole group of robbers and they were eating fine roast pork and fine roast beef and they were drinking mulled wine and they were drinking ale and there were two sacks one of gold and one of silver. And the robbers were talking about how they had robbed the house of the Lord of Dunleven. And how oh, they would never ever have managed to steal the gold and the silver and the meat and the mild wine and the ale if it hadn't been for the porter. For the porter opened the door and let the robbers in, so they managed to get clean away with the gold and the silver and the food and the wine. And the donkey managed to stand on his hind legs and put his front legs on the window sill and braid through the window. And the robbers, hearing this, thought something terrible was in the wood and trying to get into the tumble-down little cottage. And the dog began to bark. And the robbers were frightened of all this noise and they ran out of the cottage that they didn't run very far. And then the robbers talked amongst themselves and they talked to their captain and they decided that they needed to go back into the cottage to rescue the gold and the silver. And by this time the candle had burned down so it was dark in the cottage and as the robbers went into the cottage the cat clawed at each of the robbers and the dog bit each of the robbers and the cockerel crowed as if it was judgment day and so the robbers believing that the devil himself was after them simply ran out of the cottage leaving behind the bag of gold and the bag of silver so Jack and his newfound friends had, had a great feast on the pork and the beef and the mulled wine and the ale. And when the next day really did dawn, they loaded the bag of gold and the bag of silver onto the back of the donkey. And so Jack and the donkey and the dog and the cat and the cockerel all went to the hall of the Lord of Dunleven. And there at the door was the steward and of course he didn't want to let them in. But Jack said, we know you helped the robbers, we know you opened the door and let the robbers in. And that is why the Lord of Dunleven is missing a bag of gold and a bag of silver. And what Jack and his companions didn't know was that the Lord of Dunleven 
and his daughter were standing out of sight, but within earshot. And they heard what Jack said. And the Lord had long suspected that his porter wasn't entirely honest. And so the porter was made to account for his part in the robbery. And Jack and his friends were all invited in. And the Lord of Dunleavon was very impressed by this honest young man. So Jack became his steward. Which is kind of quite a well paid job, by the way. Jack became his steward and Jack sent for his mother. So Jack and his mother lived from there a life where they always knew where the next meal was coming from and they were never hungry again and of course Jack's animal friends lived with them but as to what became of the robbers story doesn't tell but I suspect it wasn't anything good what do you think but the really important thing is that Jack and his mother and the donkey the dog the cat and the rooster lived this is your line come on this is the bit you do come on happily ever after as so I hope will all of you. Now that story, of course, if you know the Brothers Grimm stories, you have worked out, though that is an, an Irish story, but of course it, it is very, very much like the Four Musicians of Bremen. And the Four Musicians of Bremen is the story which the good people of Bremen have taken to their heart. And it they, they the four animals are actually now on the Bremen on the Bremen town coat of arms, which I think is quite wonderful that the lovely people of Bremen can take a joke. Um but I, I rather like that and, and of course it, it is just the story of a, a, a poor a poor widow's son being rewarded, which of course is always nice. It's an English surname, you know, widow's son. So um, there are more stories on my channel. There are Brothers Grimm stories, there are Viking stories, there are all sorts of things. So do have a go at this yourself. Come on. It's not as difficult as most people think. I can do it. Yeah. Have a go. And um, I hope to see you all again soon. Check out my channel for more stories. It's good fun.